Hello, my name is Cynthia. Welcome to another FlossTube video. If you want to be inspired to create a legacy of beautiful stitching, then start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Today is a special edition of my FlossTube channel. I want to talk about samplers. already in my previous video that I was going to be starting four antique reproduction samplers on my birthday that's at the end of the month on August 31st so I wanted to show those um, also as part of my organization series as to how I kept up a pattern and I tried to do that as frugally as possible I know it can get expensive and I've actually been working on this project since um, February so it's taken me a while to get ready for August 31st but I wanted to share how I organized these big projects and I'm calling my birthday um, hashtag sampler palooza and um, partly just to uh, irritate my 14 year old because when I told her I wanted to call it that she closed her eyes and said oh mother please don't but um, some of her friends watch this video so you're welcome Sophia um, and then also it must just be in the air because I know Julie um, from Kansas City girl and I've Colorado world that's a hard name to say um, had done a long video about samplers as had Lisa of Kindred um, Stitcher so um, it's just something we're all I guess into and also Teresa um, Vinette of Kitten Stitcher had said that she was going to do a hashtag for um, September sampler September I think that's it um, sampler September so I'm also going to join in on that because um, in addition to starting those four samplers I am going to dedicate the month of September just to working on antique reproduction samplers I have a hawk run hollow piece that I am um, kind of putting on hold as well as some of my seasonal stitching that I might do on my weekends but I really want to focus on my three antique reproduction whips that I have already started my works in progress and also out of the four that I start on my birthday sampler palooza um, I want to pick one to focus on and um, so I wanted to share that with you and at the end of the video um, I'll probably try to put a timestamp if that's all you're interested in I wanted to do sort of a flip through of the um, collection on disc that I have of the that's really glary sorry sampler and antique needlework quarterly I purchased this last year for my birthday on Amazon for about $35 and I have pulled so many patterns from this in fact I went through my um, binder again and through my discs again yesterday and I pulled about 10 more so I think as time goes by you'll find there's even more you want to stitch as you delve deeper into the um, antique needlework world so um, that will come at the end but let's go ahead and get started with um, the projects that I will be stitching for my birthday for Sampler Palooza. The first one I chose, I picked up at Market. I've shown it before. It's called um, Fox and Rabbit Designs Mahala Barber. And that picture is a little bit hard to see as most of these are, but I might try to link, I'll um, write that down. I'm gonna try to link the um, video that showed this at Market. It was the inspiration for me to start it because I just was blown away by how pretty it was. It has a lot of um, bright colors in the thread ring that I've got here, um, but these bright colors are only little pieces of a quilt that go across the top. You can kind of see. But it is a, um, you know, primarily greens and creams. And the flowers on the fabric are really pretty. They're ecru, and I thought I had a skein of um, ecru, and I don't. But you can see, this is the fabric that I picked. I have a full half yard, and I just picked a, um, this is another piece of the frugal kitting up um, op options that I try to, to take advantage of this Zweigart fabric for a half yard which is this is only half of it 
twice as long, I can't even fit it in the frame, obviously, um, is $30 on one, two, three stitch. If you buy a half yard of most of the hand dyed fabrics, it's gonna be $50. You can sometimes get them on a sale for like 40, but that's only a couple times a year and in Facebook groups and things, and then you have to wait maybe two months to get it. So this came from one, two, three stitch in about a week or so, a little less. And what I did was, um, because I wanted it to be dark, I want the white flowers to really stand out on it. I dipped it in um, a couple different colors and I tried to get some modeling in there. So I like the way it turned out. It was light, light mocha was the base. Not I didn't do vintage country mocha this time because it's a little bit more golden. This is still kind of golden, but because um, I did use some tan and some darker colors, but I wanted it to be more neutral instead of the vintage country mocha golden color. And it's also a real stripey, the vintage country mocha, and I wanted it to be more modeled. So that was one way I saved a little money. And these threads are mostly DMC. It's charted for all DMC. Um, but what I did yesterday, my LNS in Cleburne, Texas was having a um, sale. I took my DMC flosses in and the staff there was super helpful to find some over dyes that have a little more, here's Green with Envy by Gast, a little more variegation to them, especially for like rows of grass. I really feel like the over dyes do a better um, job of interest and, and just so pretty when you have that variegation. I also dulled down the yellow just a little bit. I use squash by weeks. It's still kind of bright, but it's not as, the other one was just pure lemon. So this one has some darker variegations in it. And so this one is all ready to go. I've made a tag um, on projects that I'm gonna have with me for a while, which this is, the stitch count on this is 400 by um, 398 or something like that. It's very, very large. I like to have my rings labeled. Um, I take a print out from Pinterest and put it into a table. Then I print it out, cut it out. I'm sure there's a more techie way to do this um, and cover it with packing tape. And um, it's just on a file folder here. So this way that tag is really sturdy. It's not going to slip off. It's got um, the packing tape to keep it reinforced and it will immediately let me know what these flosses are. Um, even the writing is not as quick to me. I like to have the picture. So this is Mahela Barber and I have her ready to go on that half yard of hand dyed um, light mocha that I darkened up. So that's number one. <music> to start is a monochromatic piece that I've had my eye on for a while from a Stitchy Box and I forgot I didn't take this one out. It is a Atworth School piece. I love these because the floral design in this to me kind of makes it more feminine or just more um, interesting as opposed to the traditional Quakers maybe or some of the more modern ones you see that are just the squares or just the geometric shapes. I really like that organic quality of those flowers and I was wanting to do this in a monochromatic way. Um, the called for is like um, brown and gray at the bottom. You can't really tell in the picture but they have like a um, kind of a medium gray and I wasn't as crazy about that. So what I picked out um, they didn't have antique black silk, um, and I figured I would probably save money if I did weeks. Anyway, I decided to go with weeks charcoal, which I'm stitching on another piece that I'll show you in my next floss tube. It's a black and brown. I don't really know why it's called charcoal. I don't. I put it next to another floss called charcoal, which is a lot bluer traditionally. Grays can go so blue. And I really wanted this to be almost like a black. Um, in fact, I might do some portions in black and some portions in charcoal or maybe tweed that in some way so that it's kind of like um, darker in some areas and lighter in others. So this piece I'm really excited about. It isn't quite as big. It's 282 by 286. 
and if you just do a motif at a time, hopefully it won't be too bad. I dyed for this, um, let's see, I think I'm gonna change my mind. This is just a 40 count piece of um, mallow. I don't know why um, 123 Stitch has these fat quarters listed for $9. I know this is kind of a raw looking linen. It's not super um, pretty <laughs> by itself. I'm working on one piece with it by itself and I like it fine. But I did go ahead and dip this in some um, Rit dye and a little bit of coffee, I think, too, on this one. Because I did want it to look pretty old and grungy, like it was um, not just a real super graphic. You know, if it was black on white, I think it would almost look too stark. I like the way the edges of this are kind of modeled and then the way the threads um, will look a little bit modeled too. So that was my second one, Hannah Gilpin. It's done by the Stitchy Box Samplers. They bought the rights to this. I believe it was initially by another needlework designer and I can't remember what it was called, but they bought all of those patterns and this is a PDF, so you can print it off and I'll link that below, but I picked this up at the Silver Needle while I was there. Um, that way, PDFs are great, but you definitely can't resell a PDF pattern. If you're finished with something, you can pass it on. Well, I don't even know if you can pass it on. I guess you could pass on one copy, but PDFs are a little bit trickier. You don't want to, you know, look like you're trying to make multiple copies of it. So this is my copy that I bought from Silver Needle, Silver Needle and um, I will be able to pass that on and maybe pick out another one <laughs> with the proceeds of that sale. So that was Hannah Gilpin, and then the third one is a um, not quite finished and kidding up um, band it's not a band sampler on the front I don't think it says that but to me it looks kind of like bands it's called Luz Gonzalez by samplers remembered and there's two copies here one is the antique and oh that's what I'm looking for Spanish colonial reproduction sampler 1851 I wanted to do this one looks kind of more Hispanic and, and Mexican to me and my second daughter is Hispanic so I wanted to do this for her and it is much brighter than the antique you can see here's the picture of the antique but I um, am gonna use some modeled fabric or not modeled as much but more of like a, a warmer tone that I made you can tell the difference between like my neutrally taupe and then this one it's more of a warm color I thought the reds these colors are really bright reds and yellows and turquoises would look really pretty against a warm kind of rusty not orange but more of a warm brown so I'm really pleased with how this came out it's not as big as the other one is um, my um, first one Mahala Barber but it is specialty stitch um, rich and if you want to see some of those um, Jen Hicks has worked on this several times with her stitch with me's it inspired me to start this because I just thought it was so beautiful and I love roses and flowers so just something unique um, not like you see very often so that is Luz Gonzalez 1851 and the last one will um, segue into my portion at the end it was printed from spring 2011 the sampler antique needlework quarterly magazine and there's a couple from this magazine that I sought to find the magazine for and I realized um, you know I can get the whole disc for what it would cost a lot of these sampler patterns are about twenty twenty five dollars I can get the whole disc on Amazon I got lucky um, for thirty five dollars maybe it was eBay I think I got it on eBay for thirty five dollars and I got so many patterns including this one which is about $25 on its own Susan Rambo by um, well I guess it was a, a museum that did it I'm not sure who actually reproduced it and it is one I've seen stitched by um, oh mischievous stitches Lori 
has started this one and a few other people too I've seen. Maybe Striped Rose, Michelle? Yeah, Michelle from Striped Rose. So I think that's where I first saw it. In fact, I started to hunt it down when I saw that border with those flowers. I think Emily C might be working on this too, but she's doing a color conversion, which is sort of tempting to me because um, as you see these colors, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna stay with them. They are very bright very pink especially this one here this kind of carnation pink not my favorite but um, in the whole entirety of the design I don't know I might stick with it and this is only half the floss that's another thing I'm trying to do with this experiment or this uh, sampler Palooza. <laughs> I have to laugh every time I say it um, I'm only starting them so I got enough to do one page in the bottom left corner I like to start in the bottom left so this is half the flosses and generally what I do is go to Michael's where they have like 40% off your entire cart I think that's going on through Saturday by the way um, and I will fill my cart for online pickup in town and get the the floss for about um, 40 cents a skein or you can get it as low as like 34 cents a skein so I could kit the whole sampler sometimes for like nine dollars with thread which if you're doing silk or over dyed um, you know that can get up to 60 to 100 dollars for your thread and I know silk is nice it's a beautiful you know almost um, aesthetic as you're working on it but um, the difference between nine dollars and a hundred dollars for me I'm not in a place in my life where I can afford that so um, or even that I maybe want to you know there's other things I'd rather do go on a trip or do things so I like DMC almost all the time um, other than for grass and for things that I want variegation and I can use um, an over dyed for that so those are my four um, pieces. Let me see if I can just kind of put them in a stack here for my August 31st, my 44th birthday um, sampler palooza hashtag. And if you want to stitch with me on August 31st, I'm actually going to be starting in September with Teresa, but on that day, if you want to tag me, I would be thrilled if um, just to encourage the love of antique reproductions and just the art itself such a beautiful um, pastime so let me show you a few whips that I have I have three other samplers that I am currently stitching and I will probably work on in September as well and hope to finish sooner rather than later because they are um, a little smaller so let me segue into that the first whip I want to share with you my work in progress is by uh, Shakespeare's peddler Teresa Vinette and this was her oldest sampler she's ever reproduced from 1770 so if I finish it next year it'll be 250 years past the original stitching um, I had started it on another piece of fabric and made a mistake ran out of room when I went all the way up the side I realized I would not be able to fit the top so I cut it off and gave part of it to my mom. That's on my Instagram. I'll always back if you want to see it. So I've got this pattern down pretty well as far as the border goes. Um, I've put a little more work in it this month. It's just a honeysuckle border. It has a lot of layers of color though. It's not just like one line. It's do it three times. You know, you've got the old hickory and the Grecian gold. And then you come in with... Um, a white layer around the honeysuckle blossom so it all adds up to be just a really beautiful detail but I'm starting on the bird tail I've already stitched that bird once and I didn't really enjoy the bird because it has not confetti but it's um, kind of got a random pattern of how those colors come together so you have to do a lot of counting I like doing a border because it's real Repetitive. I know some people hate that, but I actually enjoy that. <laughs> so the border hasn't been as much an issue, um, but I'm working on the bird next. And then I hope to start doing some individual motifs, like that little crown, and there's some kind of squirrel or something up there, and a goose. Uh, it's kind of funny when you look at these from a distance, you can't tell that there's all that going on, but there is. And it's just so pretty. Someone on uh, Instagram had said this was the favorite stitch they'd ever done which made me happy because I am excited 
to make some more progress on that. And that will be um, what I work on in September with the September sampler, or sampler September. I'm so sorry I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> with Teresa's. So there's that one. The next one I've already shown before too is another one that Teresa inspired for Kathy Berg to pick up, the HL Moth. It is so fun. I don't think I've made a whole lot more progress. Here's the threads. I'm using one silk that I got sent for free from Threads Entwined with that pattern. That's Strawberry Ice. It's a dinky dye, and I love it on this piece. It really pops against my hand-dyed fabric that I dyed myself. It's just a 32 count. You can get this um, Zweigart Linen, the Belfast, in 32 for $9 for a fat quarter with your coupon at Hobby Lobby. 32 is not my favorite, um, but sometimes if they call for like a 30 count with the piece, then I'll get this and call it close enough. And it is so frugal and also instant gratification because I could just drive down to Hobby Lobby and pick it up. So that's fun. Um, I'm also doing that 32 count piece for my um, stitch along that I'm doing with a couple friends. Um, Socks for Mom, Becky and Kim Goldman. And the uh, Blackbird reproduction is not, you know, an actual reproduction. It's kind of based loosely. You can see... They've added alphabets. This original one did not have alphabets. They've also, um, I think, changed the spacing just a little bit on some of the birds and kind of brightened it up just a little bit. But the colors are just gorgeous on this one. Every time I work on it, I'm just so happy with the colors. I thought they would be too bright, but I love it. So I got a little more done on this. Um, and I hope to finish this one soon. It's really not that big of a stitch. There's the wing of that bird. It's like a pot of birds, like you're growing birds in a pot. That cracks me up too. And I started, oh yeah, I started all the way up to the top because I want to do that chain stitch um, that goes around that first kind of lollipop flower. And I miscounted somewhere. I don't know where. Um, oh, that's just a carry. But somewhere along here, I was trying to do that 10 up, do a half stitch, 10 up, do a half stitch. I miscounted somewhere. Cause I had that my flower was gonna be up here somewhere and I felt like that was too high. So I went ahead and snaked my border around to check myself and realized, yes, that would have gone off of the border. So it's spaced correctly from the border. And I don't know if I went too high on this or what, but I'll hopefully just be able to make it work. I really don't know where it kind of went off, but it is super fun to stitch and the colors are so pretty. So that one is not a, like I said, exact reproduction, but it is um, very much in the time and it came from a town in Texas, which is just a few miles from here. So that makes it more special for me. Um, I think that's all I have for works in progress until after Sampler Palooza. So let me segue to um, showing you my sampler antique needlework quarterly flip through. That's a mouthful. Thanks. Just to insert a couple things I meant to say and forgot. Um, the way I store my projects for my samplers. I love project bags. They're so pretty. Um, and I intend to have some at some point. Have my dad help me make some. He's actually the sewer in our family. He makes vinyl covers and wallets and he can, he can do a, a project bag. Um, but at this point I'm using these uh, $1.50 bags from a, um, I'm not sure the origin, it's an Asian dollar store called Daiso, D-A-I-S-O, that we have here in Fort Worth. Not sure um, where else those are in the country, maybe California. Um, but I like these because they're so affordable and um, I think we've all heard horror stories. I know Teresa Vanette had one where uh, water leaked out of um, something and got the needlework wet. So I like to have a plastic protector. I have cats that have hairballs and kids and so plastic is um, my preferred. I know it's not ideal long term to keep them in vinyl um, and hopefully they won't stay there as long as it would do to damage them. But I also make the same tag that I do for my um, threads on the bag so that I can tell at a glance what project is in here if it's folded in. It has two pockets, one for threads 
and one for the sampler so they aren't touching one another. Another aspect that I appreciate. And if I want to, I can clip my thread ring to this um, at the bottom. But a lot of times I tuck them inside here so they don't get um, damaged or bothered either. So that's how I kit up a sampler. I haven't gotten these bags picked up yet for the other four, but I will soon and I'll do the same treatment on those. So that's how I kit that up. And I also forgot to say that my um, Sarah Wooden piece is done on uh, 36 count sand by Picture This Plus. So that was that fabric. And I forgot one whip from Mania that I consider um, a sampler. It is based on an, an antique this is by Brenda Gervais, it's called Shepherd's Sampler. And I like this one because it's much more of a manageable size if you feel a little bit overwhelmed by the thought of a 400 count um, reproduction sampler, then maybe dip your toe in with something like this. She used a much larger antique, uh, Brenda Gervais did, to create this design. So it just has some motifs and it can kind of get you um, started if you haven't wanted to take on a giant piece and that one um, I really have enjoyed stitching it but I only worked on it for one day during mania so I might have a little bit of a break from my giant ones and try to get some work work done on that she likes the um, pieces to be pretty delicate looking so this is a um, lakeside linen I think it's vintage buttercream I can't remember if it's vintage or not it might just be buttercream I think it's vintage and it's only a 32. I meant to do, actually she calls for a 36. I accidentally ordered a 32. I, it was my fault. I went back and looked. I did it. But um, I'm doing it one strand over two. And I still like the coverage. I think it's going to look really delicate and feminine. So that's another option um, when you do the... Um, Samplers, you can do one thread as low as 32 to see how you like it. Um, and I wonder if someone had asked me about my hawk run that they had started theirs with one strand and I'm doing two and they felt like their coverage may not be dense enough for their preference. I wonder if you could just go over this again. Maybe do like a test corner and if you don't like it, rather than frogging it, just do another one strand over. I've heard of people doing that. So it might be a an option if you don't care for it as you go on rather than ripping it all out just do another strand over top it is like stitching it twice but at least you would be happy with the coverage so that is my fourth antique reproduction if you count this one that I'm working on so wanted to slip that in and I'll segue now into the sampler quarterly in organizing my patterns I had shared this on Instagram on a 30-day challenge we're doing with um, connected threads. Threads connected? Um, I had that wrong. I can't remember how it's called. I've been doing it for 20 days and I still can't remember. Um, but we shared how we organize our patterns. And um, I don't know if this is unique to me, um, but I have been making collages and like notebooks like this since I was a kid. And so it naturally segued for me to, um, or it made sense for me to make a notebook with um, pictures of the pieces that I have completed, the patterns I have all stitched up. Of course, when I put this on Instagram, I didn't want any confusion. I didn't stitch all these. <laughs> these aren't my finishes. Um, and I might switch it out to include my finishes, but probably not. These are just inspiration to me to remind myself of what I have in this binder, if I'm looking for it. And then also just how beautiful these pieces will be when they're completed kind of to keep your eye on the price and this one is um when i got a question about i don't have it yet it's coming for my birthday though it's from a scarlet letter i've not ordered from that website before the shipping was a little high like seven dollars but um this is a german sampler it has a lot of biblical motifs on it like the spies from canaan and it even has um jesus on the cross which i might just have a cross um so anyway, this is how I organize my patterns from my antique needlework quarterly and also just other patterns. I usually make a working copy and I put the original in this booklet. And it's just, I hear some more in the back. It's just something that I enjoy. It's just a fun kind of pastime. So those are my 
patterns after they're printed out. I took them out of the sleeve to show you what's on the disc, or at least my favorites. The um, complete collection goes from 1991 to 2015, and it says that there are over 80 issues. So, and um, it takes a long time to get through all of them. I was trying to just quickly browse through them last night and I couldn't get through. I think I got through to 20 and I was like, okay, that's enough. Cause I had done this last year, but your tastes change a lot in a year. I was finding lots more that I would stitch. And the first perusal through as a brand new stitcher, I think I found three patterns, maybe five. Um, and this time I have a lot more. I'm not sure how many, but a lot more. <laughs> so it's fun to have this um, kind of as a, a pastime just to browse through. Oh, and for the disc, I have a MacBook, so I had to borrow this um, reader. This is kind of expensive. It's like $80, but you might already have an older computer that still has a CD-ROM, or you might have a friend that you could borrow that from, um, but I did want to mention that because these CD-ROMs are a little bit of a dinosaur, so you might have some issue with that. Um, but the first one I wanted to show, and I'm, I'm only showing the antique um, reproductions because there are several projects in here that are really pretty. Some of them look kind of like Blackbird Design or like um, Paulette Stewart, like something you would want to do, but I wanted to focus just on the reproductions. So they all have, most of them have people names. This one I don't think does. This is an 1801 Italian sampler and I was intrigued by this because of the colors. I don't know though, when it comes together, you can see it like this, it almost looks like a pair of pants. I don't know what that shape is, but I was really intrigued by the colors and the idea of finishing it with lace around it. I think that would be really pretty. It doesn't look super huge. It said something about the four corners being the seasons. Over here it has like different colored corners, spring, summer, winter, fall, which I thought was interesting. And lots of very, um, beautiful floral motifs there. It looks like she maybe started it and didn't finish it. I think it may have been intended to go all the way and she got tired, like, no, this is too hard. And it doesn't have letters, it has numbers. And um, I almost feel guilty saying this as a sampler lover. I don't love alphabets. <laughs> I'm not usually drawn to samplers that have alphabets on them. In fact, some of the contemporary ones where I don't feel too bad about it, I intend to change the alphabets to scripture. Whereas, you know, it has a message, it says something. I know they were intended to be teaching tools and you're reproducing an art, but if it's my prerogative, <laughs> then I would rather it have a message. And that's what drew me to this one, this Jean Parker sampler from 1738. She has tons of letters here. And even, I think that's like a flame stitch, lots of specialty stitches. But what drew me to it, here's the, the new one, is that it's a lot of um, just, oh, what's the word? Um, sayings, you know, uh, pious verses, the Lord's Prayer is in there. It has a different letter for J and V because it is so old, 1738. And I would love to have those sentiments reproduced. I mean, that's the word I'm looking for, rather than an alphabet. But I love the colors on this. And I think there's like, goodness, a ton of bands, 21 bands. So that might be something that you could say, I'm gonna do just a band a month and kind of chip away at it and have a beautiful stitch at the end and it is a way to learn some new stitches. I only print out the first two pages of the pattern so that I don't fill my book until I'm ready to stitch it. And I try to indicate um, where I can find that because after you have 80 issues, and oh, I didn't do it on this one. I have it written down on another piece of paper, but I like to write like summer 2010 or volume whatever number whatever on the disc because it's hard it's like a needle and haystack to go back and find the pattern after you printed it out if you don't have it marked so i'll go back and do that because i have this written on a piece of paper but yeah i don't print out the entire pattern it's probably about 10 to 12 pages um first for printer ink and also just uh, it's not necessary yet but that one is really pretty um the italian sampler is from volume 13. If you have any questions on any of these sampler antique quarterly 
pieces or the others, please leave it down below and I'll try to look it up. I wasn't writing down everything when I first printed these out last year. I tried to go back and fix the ones that didn't have a, um, a place to find them, but I didn't get them all. This is 1850 Margaret Matthews sampler. It's an Adam and Eve. It talks about the garden at the top and it has age, I think it's age eight or age nine along with the year 1815 at the bottom. I thought that was really pretty. It has this, the snake I believe is like couched on there like in a thick um, piece of thread which I thought was interesting. And that's in the summer um, issue of volume 19. I don't always have the year. It doesn't say the year on my disc. So sometimes I can find it. Sometimes I didn't write it down. Another one that is a little more primitive. Um, I like it because it's American for Mary Locke 1812 from North Carolina. There was a particular school that used that well with the bucket as a um, common motif for their students. And so they were able to track her it wasn't dated a year there's no year on here they were able to track this um, Mary Locke to the Salem Female Academy I'm not remembering what the Moravians um, what sect of um, people those were that made the boarding school but they were Moravians and so they were able to see that well somebody found this um, somebody from the magazine or However, they acquired the sampler for 25 cents at a garage sale. It's from 1812 and it was stuck up on a shelf for 25 cents. That kills me. So I really appreciate that. And it does have a, a pretty verse about uh, Mary Locke is my name. Um, something about Christ is my salvation. I liked that part too. And there's birds at the bottom. These pictures are, are not always telling the truth. I bet that would be a lot prettier in person. So the pictures are a little bit dark, as we always say. A lot of people have stitched this. 1854 Isabel Johnstone sampler. I didn't initially feel drawn to this, but now I do. <laughs> I really like that red cow. I love the color red, so I don't know why it initially slipped by me, but that comes from the number 59 summer 2010 issue and I believe it is available as a chart by itself maybe by Network Press I can't remember um, somebody showed it recently maybe Lori from Mischievous Stitches but I really love that one and it doesn't look super huge I can't remember what the stitch count is but it's not such a booger so <laughs> that one might be on my list for sure. Um, this Jane Tomlinson piece from 1851, um, winter 2001's issue, I wanted to show you as an example. Um, I don't know if I'll have the energy or want to to go through this, but I love the antique that they show. That sh reminds me a little bit of the Scarlet Letter one I like. I believe it's German. Um, some of the... No, yeah, Dutch or German influence. Um, I love the different motifs on it and the way it's kind of, I don't know a word other than smudgy. <laughs> it looks kind of like blurred out. And then the reproduction, I just printed a corner of this one. They make it so crisp and I just really don't care for always the way, maybe that was back in the 80s and 90s that they did that more because it feels like maybe they didn't have the over dyed option. You know, if you did a ghast pumpkin pie and some wood trail, I feel like you would have a much more variegated antique look on that border as opposed to like a DMC bright orange and bright green. I think that's part of what I don't love about the Needlework Quarterly. A lot of their reproductions are just too crisp and too, um, now they look dated. You know, whereas this over here is so timeless. Like, I think that would look good on your wall in 30 years, 40 years. Um, but this right here kind of has an 80s or 90s feel to it. So it feels like they've kind of um, disrupted the timelessness of these samplers. And some people may like that Christmas. I don't mean to sound um, like I'm, I don't mean to be rude. <laughs> but for me, the appeal is that faded vintage and I feel like you could use threads 
that would do a better job and fabric of imitating that. So that's just a side note on some of these. There's more I'll show you that I feel the same way about this one included. Anne Carroll from volume number 11, the autumn issue. I don't know what year. They don't say the year on my disc printout. This is an Adam and Eve. Um, again, these colors to me almost look like 70s. They don't, like 1970s. They don't look like um, 1840s. They look like, you know, just dated country kind of uh, decor. So if I did this one, I would want to use like apple cider from Gast or some kind of um, toffee or something that has more rich like oldie colors. But I love it because it's a um, an Adam and Eve and I like the angels and the flowers. You could even use some of those motifs as pin keeps. That would be pretty. Or a little pillow in the middle there. So you can use pieces of these for sure. And that has the entire um, list of Glorine and the Cross, which is a hymn I used to sing when I was a kid. So we do more contemporary music now, but I remember those hymns. So I really like that one. That one is a definite one. This one has some really interesting um, satin stitches on the border and the house. It looks kind of, not creepy, but kind of dark. You know, not Halloween, but um, I actually saw someone stitch this on a blog. Um, and it's actually a hunter green color. And I think it would be cooler if it was black. So if I did it, um, I would do it in black. But I saw this in someone's blog and it is really cool. So that one again is, oh, I didn't say it, is Eyes of the Lord Sampler. Um, some of these samplers they've put in there, they've done themselves. They're just like based on the style. But this is one from an age 11 girl. It doesn't have a year. But it is a, a reproduction. It's not one of theirs. Um, now, they may have changed it a little bit. That may be why it doesn't have her name on it. I do think the original was really, really wrecked. And this is kind of what they could piece out of it. So, I like that one. Eyes of the Lord Sampler, Autumn, volume number seven. This one I've seen other people do. I think Emily C. has done it. And maybe Candy Stitches? I could be wrong. Maybe she started it. M. Dettel. Dedolfson, 1892. I like the bright colors on this one and that they're so unique. And I think if I remember from the directions, um, the floss is really bulky. Um, and I wanna say they use three threads on a 32 to make it almost look like it has a, um, like a dimension to the stitching, which I thought that would be fun. That's something I haven't tried. And it's not very big. I love birds. So I might be doing that. And that would be cool in overnights too. You could kind of deepen those colors up a little bit. Maybe do a terracotta instead of a red and a um, brethren blue, Grecian gold, some of those colors. So that one may be a mania start next year or the year after. <laughs> I have so many. So 1892 on that one. Um, the other favorites, some of my favorites. Um, I think Kitten Stitcher has highlighted this piece before. Anne Hall Sampler from uh, 1836. Look at that border. This reminds me of a Hands Across the Sea piece. I can totally see, um, oh, now her name's escaped me. I know her name, but I can't remember it. Um, I can see Hands Across the Sea doing this kind of piece. It's an Adam and Eve, and it's very earth tones. It's much more... Um, timeless I feel like in the colors that they charted it with so this one I definitely want to do it's 377 by 271 it's big but once you get the border done I feel like it's a lot of just motifs and then I haven't done a lot of one over one verse stitching I know um, several people do not love that so um, that may be just something I have to kind of eat my vegetables he was saying that recently get that over with the part you don't like and then you get to do the fun stuff so 1836 and Hall, one of my favorites. If I bought these patterns, if I bought even two or three of these, I would have paid for the subscription. So in my mind, that's why it's a frugal choice. This one, um, I don't know if I'll ever stitch this one, but I do admire it. Maria de la Plaza, 1861, another. This reminds me a little bit of Luz. 
Gonzalez. It has the bands, um, it's Spanish. The colors look a little more Spanish. And it's not a super huge piece. So I, I really like that one. That one came from winter 2013. So another one of those kind of more bright colors. The other one I bought, uh, Susan Rambo, was my um, initial um, reason to search out the um, subscription. And then the other one was this one. Margaret Lead Bitter. Not Lead Better, Lead Bitter. Um, I want to say Becky is working on this. Socks for Mom, my friend. She may be doing both of the Solomon's Temples. There's another Solomon Temple piece that uh, GGR reproduced, and I can't remember the name of that one. I think it might be a little smaller. And my friend, um, well, my acquaintance, <laughs> maybe we'll be friends someday, but um, Robert Harris brought that to my stitch along, and he had done the entire GGR Solomon's Temple over one. It was beautiful. <laughs> um, I hope to see it again someday. It wasn't framed, he just brought it, but um, that Solomon's Temple is so intriguing to me. Partially because I've been to the temple in Jerusalem. We went um, December of last year, and so it was a really kind of almost sentimental piece for me. That is such a once in a lifetime thing to put your hand on the wailing wall and to be near what they consider the Holy of Holies. This was actually done in a Masonic um, museum. I'm not sure if those motifs are from the Masons or if that was just a teacher that had that motif because you do see several of these. There's an article about it, but this is 1846 Margaret Ledbetter and it's another one. I didn't write down what year um, and it doesn't say it anywhere in here what volume or year this magazine is but if you would like to know more let me know so that's the last piece I had that was several and like I said um, I didn't show the um, pieces from this magazine that are um, their creations the um, Hoffman whoever it is that put these together but um, one real quick one just as an example of some of the things that are in here they have these little stockings um, that are ornaments there's tons of different patterns that you could use for smalls, um, like as an exchange or a pen keep, um, different motifs that you could pull from it. And some of them do look a little bit dated. Like I said, I would change the colors on that. It doesn't look like a Liberty sampler to me with those mint greens and aquas. I would change that to navy and gold or something. But you can work with it. And there's such a diverse um, set of things. Lots of cut work and white work and cruel um, things that I'm not quite ready to dip my toe into but if I wanted to they have fantastic instructions and diagrams and so I would just highly recommend the um, disc if you have any interest complete collection like I said I I either got this on Amazon or eBay um, you do have to have a reader for a CD-ROM which is a dated Kind of piece of tech anymore but it is a fun way to look at a ton of samplers to read about samplers to learn about them and um, i hope you'll join me and several others in september in stitching a sampler or um, maybe one of the smaller ones that's based on a reproduction um, you'll still get that same feel and experience and it's something that you can leave as a legacy. So thank you for joining me. I hope it wasn't too long. If you wanna skip around with timestamps, I'll try to include those so you don't have to. Um, well, you've already listened to all of this possibly. <laughs> but again, thank you for tuning in and I will be updating on my other stitching, what I've been doing in August because I haven't started these yet, um, probably at the end of the month. So happy stitching.